Good morning students. We are getting back after a mini gap and I am back with the videos. Hope I will be able to continue regularly. And today's video I am going to discuss a very important topic on short term regulation of blood pressure. So as I mentioned under regulation of blood pressure long term that is renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism is there. Short term which we are going to discuss today and specifically in the short term regulation I am going to discuss about baroreceptor. Please note it down. So baroreceptor reflex is one of the short term regulation of blood pressure and today's video is about baroreceptor reflex which I will be discussing. Apart from this baroreceptor we have chemoreceptor which is short term regulation of blood pressure then CNS ischemic response. Next point is baroreceptor reflex when it acts within seconds to minutes. So as I said short term seconds to minutes so baroreceptor reflex range is usually and the mean arterial pressure is 60 to 200 millimeter mercury. So, when there is a BP fluctuation from 60 to 200, baroreceptor reflex will act. When it is 40 to 60, chemoreceptor reflex will act. When it is less than 40, CNS ischemic response will act. So, the, if they ask the question, baroreceptor reflex acts when BP is, the answer is a fluctuation of blood pressure if it is 60 to 200 millimeter mercury. Baroreceptor reflex is the one which reacts. Now coming to baroreceptor reflex which is short term regulation of blood pressure. Whenever there is an increase in blood pressure, this baroreceptor reflex is going to act which causes reflex. That word is important. Reflex decrease in blood pressure. So reflex. That's why it is called as baroreceptor reflex. Simple. It is homeostasis. When BP is increasing, some reflex is happening which causes decrease in BP. We are trying to bring the blood pressure back to normal. As I mentioned reflex. In general, we have components of reflux. So, we need not know about that components, we need not write about the components of reflux are here, but for understanding so that this baroreceptor mechanism becomes easy. In general, any reflux receptors will be there, afferent will be there, center will be there, efferent. For example, here the blood pressure is increased. So, the BP is increased that has to be sensed by receptors and here we all know it is baroreceptors. So baroreceptors are the one which is going to sense the increase in blood pressure. What will be the target result? Yeah obviously decrease in blood pressure. What will be the afferent? I will explain that. That increase in blood pressure will be center is medulla. Efferent usually is sympathetic parasympathetic okay now coming to baroreceptors so again the mcq what are the name the baroreceptors in case of regulation of blood pressure we are having two types of baroreceptors please note it down carotid sinus and aortic arch carotid sinus and aortic arch are the two baroreceptors the name carotid sinus is because it is present in the internal carotid artery where common carotid artery bifurcates into external and internal and the internal carotid artery there are some receptors in the name of baroreceptors. Same way in the arch of iota we are having baroreceptors. These are also called as stretch receptors please note it down. Reason better I think I can draw the diagram here. Yeah just to concentrate here. Why they are called as stress receptors I am going to explain. So this is arch of aorta which contains aortic arc baroreceptors. These are carotid sinus baroreceptors which is present in the internal carotid artery. Now what happens when there is increased blood pressure. So imagine the output cardiac output the arch of aorta the blood is going out and what will happen when there is increased blood pressure in general you tell yeah there is going to be more blood going. Whenever there is increased pressure more blood is going what will happen to this receptors whether it will be or whether this wall the baroreceptors wall where it is located whether this will be dilated or it will be shrinked it will be dilated or stretched to make it simple whenever there is increased BP there is increased blood flow this increased blood flow stretches the place where this baroreceptors are located so they are very very sensitive to stretch only if this is stretched, these baroreceptors are stimulated. 
so baroreceptors receptors are stimulated to stretch that's why they are also called as stretch receptors mcq please note it down now i finish the receptors carotid sinus aortic arch i also explained where it is located and the other name is stretch receptors now what happens i yeah, will start with increase in bp yeah this is first step increase in bp and obviously there is stretch or baroreceptors are stretched one is increased blood pressure because of that there is increased stretch because of that there is increased stimulus for baroreceptors or increased baroreceptors increased firing of baroreceptors they are responsible they are sensitive to stretch finished now let me go to the next from here what happens yeah these aortic receptors these aortic arch baroreceptors and carotid sinus baroreceptors comes to center see here again i repeat components of reflex receptors which i finished baroreceptors and that baroreceptors have to send the signals to the center which will coordinate and here the center is in the medulla note it down so bp regulation center is located in medulla and here we call it as nucleus tractus solitorius i will again write it nucleus tractus solitarius so if they ask center for baroreceptor is located in medulla you specifically asked which nucleus you can mention nucleus tractus solitarius now next question receptors accepted baroreceptors center is nucleus tractus solitarius what is the afferent so from the aortic arch is 10th nerve roman number 10 from the carotid sinus is 9th nerve i hope you know 9th nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve 10th nerve is vagus so these are the afferents which is coming to the nucleus tractus solitarius these nerves are also called as buffer nerves and pause the video and try to why it is called as buffer nerves hope you know the meaning of a buffer yes very good correct because when there is increase in bp this is nerves are going to do something to bring the bp back or buffer increase in bp you buffer it and bring it back to normal and one more thing mcq which i want to tell is the glossopharyngeal nerve which is coming to the nucleus of tractus solitarius there is a specific branch if you want you can note down the name herring's nerve special branch please note it down herring's if they asked which branch of glossopharyngeal nerve is coming to the nucleus of tractus solitarius in bar septal reflex the answer is herring's nerve same for 10th nerve there is a special branch of 10th nerve cyan's nerve so note it down mcq herring's nerve is a branch of glossopharyngeal nerve cyan's nerve is a branch of 10th nerve and they are also called as sinus nerves because they also supply the sinuses like carotid sinus one of the sinus receptor is over afferent is over center is over now i'm we are going to further decode and we all know the target decrease bp the final result which i want to get is decreased bp i am starting with increased bp so increased bp bar receptors are stretched that stretch is taken by 9th and 10th nerve which is afferent and are reaching the center here so far i have mentioned nucleus tractus solitarius but it is not ah uh, okay i want to make it easy now you pause the video and tell me from here i will divide it like this sympathetic parasympathetic just concentrate from nucleus tractus solitarius the afferents are going to come in the form of sympathetic and parasympathetic now you tell me if i stimulate this there is going to be decrease in bp or if i stimulate parasympathetic there is going to be decrease in bp and because i am starting with increase in blood pressure so which should be activated that's my question sympathetic or parasympathetic yes the answer is parasympathetic so this parasympathetic should be stimulated which will cause decrease in bp then what should happen to sympathetic decrease simple i have to explain what other centers are going to be involved but to make it simple whenever there is increase in bp because of baroreceptors because of baroreceptor reflex 
parasympathetic is stimulated there will be decrease in heart rate decrease in blood pressure sympathetic is inhibited that means bp is inhibited or bp is decreased this is as simple as that now let me go further into the sympathetic parasympathetic so whenever this is stimulated note it down cvlm caudal ventrolateral medulla plus so whenever nucleus tractus solitarius is stimulated that stimulates caudal ventrolateral medulla because of glutamate which is you all know excitatory neurotransmitter so nucleus tractus solitarius stimulates caudo ventrolateral medulla but there is a function of for this caudo ventrolateral medulla what it does it inhibits rvlm so rostral ventrolateral medulla i am making it simple rostro ventral lateral medulla is similar to sympathetic nervous system so now you can understand what is this rostral ventral lateral medulla and this is gaba so nucleus tractus solitarius stimulates cvlm caudal ventral lateral medulla but caudal ventral lateral medulla inhibits rvlm rostral ventral lateral medulla now function of rostral ventral lateral medulla is sympathetic which will increase bp so rvlm is expected to increase the blood pressure but in this scenario i am you can even pause the video and dance in this scenario we started with increased blood pressure so what will happen to nucleus tractus solitarius whenever bp is increased they are very sensitive to increased blood pressure or they are sensitive to baroso that's why it is center for baroso to reflux so nts is stimulated what will happen to cvlm stimulated what will happen to rvlm inhibited so sympathetic is inhibited so bp will decrease so this is this scenario today's scenario when bp is increased what happens now in many books also we see vasomotor center vmc vmc vasomotor center so far i have not mentioned that word it is almost same or wherever i am going to use the sympathetic is similar to vasomotor center you can note it down and another very very important thing which i want to discuss is this function of rvlm which i told is similar to sympathetic see i have wrote rostral ventral lateral medulla which is sympathetic nervous system it does mainly arterio constriction veno constriction and increase heart rate what arterio constriction does is arterial whenever there is a constriction of arterioles peripheral resistance is increased which will increase blood pressure especially diastolic what veno constriction venous veins constrict increases cardiac output increases blood pressure especially systolic heart rate we all know whenever heart rate is increased cardiac output increases whenever cardiac output is increased bp is increased what i want to mention here is this rvlm is involved in all the three arterio constriction veno constriction heart rate whereas parasympathetic is mainly involved only in decreased heart rate that's what i want you to understand so in this scenario when bp is increased rvlm is inhibited parasympathetic is stimulated yeah this part we finish now coming to parasympathetic note it down this parasympathetic fibers are located in nucleus ambiguous so one nucleus which i mentioned is nucleus of tractus solitarius another nucleus is nucleus ambiguous which is going to be mediating the parasympathetic fibers and note it down this parasympathetic does not do this arterial constriction veno constriction but it causes decrease heart rate very very important please note it down now you can answer why parasympathetic is increased yeah nucleus tractus solitarius stimulates the parasympathetic i already made it simple nucleus tractus solitarius whenever it is stimulated sympathetic is inhibited sympathetic gone inhibited parasympathetic is stimulated whenever parasympathetic is stimulated heart rate decreases and bp decreases parasympathetic does not play much role in first two this uh, arterial constriction and veno constriction so it is mainly concerned with heart rate that's why we call this bp is inversely proportional to heart rate please note it down bp is inversely proportional to heart rate otherwise whenever there is increase in blood pressure there is reflex decrease in heart rate which i am discussing the reason please pause the video and try to answer i want you to write it in comment section also what is this law it starts with m whenever there is increase in bp there is a reflex decrease in heart rate obviously when heart rate is decreased bp is going to decrease yes the answer is mary's law
M A R E Y. So Mary's law is nothing but whenever there is increased in BP, there will be decrease in heart rate. When bare sweaters are more firing, what will happen to sympathetic? Again, right, because these are very important things. Increased bare receptor firing. That's what we are discussing. Because of increased BP, there is increased bare receptor firing. So what will happen? Sympathetic is decreased. Parasympathetic is increased. Because of increased parasympathetic, heart rate is decreased. Because of heart rate decreased, BP is decreased. And this is the baroreceptor reflex, which I am telling in detail and decoding one by one of the components of reflex. To make it understand how the baroreceptor, how they found out that if they are stretched, the firing is going to be there and BP is going to be decreased. Very simple. Now, what they found out was, yeah, this is common carotid artery. Now, what I do, I occlude here. So, first step is, Experiment, in fact, first experiment is common carotid artery occlusion. So, I have occluded the common carotid artery. So, blood is not going to go beyond that. So, what will happen to baroreceptors? Whether they will fire or not, no. So, firing baroreceptors is less. BR, baroreceptors is less. So, what will happen to 9th and 10th nerve? Decreased. Decreased 9th and 10th. So, what will happen to BP regulation? No. Or otherwise, BP decrease will not be there. Very simple. And another experiment. Yeah. Okay. So I am applying a clamp or obstructing or occluding. Okay. Make it I see. Second experiment. First experiment is over. Now, second experiment, I am applying a clamp. Please concentrate. I am applying a clamp above the location of barrel receptor. So I am applying the clamp here. Now you try to answer. You pass the video and answer. Just concentrate. I am applying the clamp above where the bar receptors are located. Now tell me what will happen to bar receptors. They are going to function or not? Yeah, they are going to function because blood is going to come to the bar receptors. No problem. Above only I am occluding. So all these actions will be there. This bar receptors, 9th nerve, 10th nerve. So increased bar receptors only. If the BP is more, there will be decreased in BP. Very simple. So with this only, they found out that the location of bar receptors and that they are stretch receptors. Third experiment. I hope you know what experiment I am going to tell. Now just I am going to apply the clamp below the barrel receptors, location of barrel receptors. So this clamp I am applying here. Now concentrate, see here. Yeah. I am applying the clamp below the barrel receptors. So now what will happen to the blood flow? Whether it is going to reach the barrel receptors? No. So, bare receptors now clamp is applied below. So, decreased bare receptors firing. So, parasympathetic is decreased. So, BP decrease will not be there or bare receptor reflex will not be there. So, these three experiments shows that the location of bare receptors, carotid sinus, aortic arch, they are also called as stretch receptors, 9th and 10th nerve are also called as buffer nerves, they are also called as sinus nerves. To finally summarize, worth repeating, whenever my blood pressure is increased, bare receptors will be fired through 9th and 10th nerve. Our center is medulla, in that I am having nucleus tractus solitorius, NTS, this word should be there when I am going to write bare receptor reflex and this NTS will inhibit the sympathetic and I told the mechanism. So, vasomotor center is, center is decreased in this case. Parasympathetic which is located in nucleus ambiguous is increased. Simple, simple Mary's law. What I am telling our today video is one word. Whenever your BP is increased, heart rate decreased through barrel receptors. And BP is trying to come back normal. That is why it is called as reflux. And I included all the five receptors, afferents, center, efferents, and target. Today we finished one part of short term regulation, barrel receptor reflux. In next video, I will discuss on chemoreceptor reflux and CNS ischemic response. Thank you. And I am planning to put more videos for you students. So you subscribe our channel and support our channel and also share to our medical and paramedical community and hope this video will be useful for you. Thank you. We will meet in the next video. And remember, this is a very important university question. Thank you. Meet you in next class.